Yeah. And Franco Ordoño, uh, I'd like to ask you, you have a, a new article that talks about how uh, m many of these policies were foreshadowed uh, by a, uh, a, a memo that uh, the now sitting attorney general, Jeff Sessions, sent to the Obama administration last year. Could you talk about that? Yeah, this is. A, I just talked with uh, the White House yesterday about it too. I um, I got a hold of of this letter that you're referring to that Jeff Sessions wrote in July 2016, um, and it basically outlines two of those most controversial uh, points that we were talking about earlier. Jeff Sessions in his letter uh, talked about the 60 percent of parents. Um, that, pardon me, the 60 percent of unaccompanied minors who come to the United States um, who eventually lead, uh, end up meeting with their parents who are here illegally. And he, he specifically questioned then-Secretary Jay Johnson and then-Attorney General Loretta Lynch why um, they were not being, quote-unquote, according to them, humanely removed from the country. He also, in those letters, pointed out um, that the, their parents um, were subject to prosecution. So I think what it what it shows um, is that this is not out of the mainstream thinking of the Trump administration. Not only is Jeff Sessions, as you pointed out, the, our current attorney general, but Stephen Miller, who was um, was a big part of these executive orders, he was part of Jeff Sessions' staff. So this has been part of the thinking for a while. I'll just add, when I did talk to um, the administration last night, they said, look, these are some, these policies are things that law enforcement has been asking for. Um, so I, I think we're going to get some clarity pretty soon on those things. But, yeah, the, this is not this is not necessarily, you know, ground new stuff, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And something else that's not new is the existence of a deportation machine. As you have said in some of your articles, haven't you, that Trump doesn't need to create a deportation machine because the Obama administration already did that? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's exactly right. I mean, we, ha we can't forget that Obama, for many years, deported more um, people from the who are in the country uh, illegally than any other president. It was up through 2012, 2014 uh, that he was doing this. You mentioned Luis Gutierrez earlier getting kicked out of that meeting. Um, I think that just shows what kind of fight is ahead. Luis Gutierrez went after uh, President Obama a few years ago, calling him a deporter-in-chief. Um, so. Uh, Obama kind of set the stage in some ways. Trump has kind of taken that and taken it upon. I think a, a lot of us were curious whether he would do some of the—take away some of the disc prosecutorial discretion that he did. But Trump has definitely taken further steps, much further, um, in potentially going after some of the unaccompanied minors and particularly their parents. So I think it's going to be very interesting. And finally, Tim Warden uh, Hertz, uh, your organization, uh, the uh, Northwest Immigrant Rights Project, what are you gearing up for now in the coming months? Uh, what kind of efforts are you going to be making in, in terms of uh, immigration reform or attempts to beat back what is coming from the Trump administration? That's right. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different pieces that we're working on. I mean, we, you know, we are part of uh, the litigation uh, regarding the, the Muslim ban, and, and if there's any new orders, we certainly uh, would uh, would be looking at challenging those. I think, as um, as was mentioned earlier, I think uh, regarding these new uh, draft memos, I think there's policies in there that 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 we believe are unconstitutional and that that we would also be looking to challenge. I think beyond that, we're also doing a lot of uh, pushing communities. I mean, the fear that that these memos and that the rhetoric coming from the administration have created in communities, uh, both among folks who are undocumented and folks who are documented, has been immense. And you know, I've been doing uh, outreach around the state, as have uh, many other folks in our organization. Um, and you know, and the fear um, is, is is really hard to overstate. Um, you know, I, I had a question the other day. Uh, from a woman who is talking about her husband, who's had a green card for 14 years. Uh, they're from Mexico, and she said that they'd planned a trip um, in next month to go visit family in Mexico. Um, and she was wondering whether or not uh, it would it would be safe to do so, whether or not you know she's a U.S. citizen, he has a green card, whether or not they could they could even leave the country and expect to be allowed back in. And and you know and and you know I I think they they should be, and and I think that that. You know, the, the fear that that creates um, is, is immense. Um, and and so, so we're working on different levels, both representing people um, in, in immigration court, um, uh, trying to, trying to, to help uh, folks, folks stop it um, as much as they can in each case, 
um, and also, you know, doing community education as well as, as litigation just to stop it on a, uh, on a systemic level. Well, okay, I'd like to thank both of our guests for being with us, Tim Warden Hertz of the Northwest Immigrant Rights Project and Franco Ordonez of McClatchy Newspaper. Thanks for joining us. When we come